Hello everybody from Aromatherapy 101. This is my Module 3, Project Number 1, for discussion. And what I wanted to do for you guys is make a short video about exactly how to distill essential oils. And what we're looking at right now is my still. And this is essentially a standard chemistry set. And for the home distiller, this is going to be one of the most practical setups uh, for several reasons. Cost effectiveness, um, fire uh, safety or lack of a fire hazard, and also uh, the amount of material. So let's take a closer look at the still and how it all works. Starting with the heating mantle and there are several different heating sources available from hot plates to heating mantles even a kitchen stove can be used but this is the safest and the most reliable it really heats up evenly around the boiling flask beyond that you have the boiling flask as we can see here the water is boiling consistently so that is the boiling flask. From the boiling flask you have the reservoir flask and it's pretty self-explanatory that's where your herb reserves are held so the steam can go through. Following up the reservoir flask you come to what's known as the distilling arm or the still head. A couple different names but essentially this is a key component uh, to connect the reservoir flask to one of the most unique parts of the system, the condenser. And so the condenser is this long tube that you see here. It has coils inside of it and the steam is pushed through those coils while I simultaneously push cold water around the outside of the coil and this is what condenses the steam back into the liquid and allows me to collect it as an essential oil underneath that is the collection flask and that simply collects the uh, essential oil that's dripping in there and the hydrosol as well uh, which they need to be separated and hopefully we'll get a chance to show you that uh, a reverse osmosis filter is really good for this kind of work uh, to keep your chemistry, chemistry glassware clean and also for distillation purposes distilled water is the best and I just want to show you this is a normal everyday uh, fish tank aquarium pump and it simply pumps the water uh, I'm getting a little lost here starting at the bottom and it's good to start at the bottom and have the pump push the water all the way to the top where it can again drain back into the sink and that is important for getting complete coverage around the coils as you can see the water completely surrounds the coils if it was dripping from the top it would just run over the coil I've tried it both ways I've had decent results both ways but from the reading I've done this is the best method and the last piece that's not always necessary but great to have this is the separation funnel this funky looking piece you see here tear shaped and since the essential oil either sits on top or sinks below the hydrosol uh, this allows you to separate those two out as you can see there you just uh, flip the switch and drain out the liquid until you have everything that you need So 
So again, distilling essential oils really is easy. You start with boiling the water. Uh, you turn the water into a vapor or a gas. The gas travels through the herbage. Uh, this is catnip, just a quick FYI. The steam continues to travel until it reaches the condenser where it's cooled back to a liquid. You collect the liquid and separate the oil from the hydrosol. So you can see it's darker around now. Uh, the still has been running for about mm, six hours. And, you know, I'd let it go longer, uh, except for I didn't have enough herbage to completely fill up my reservoir flask. So I'm going to cut it off here. I've already turned the still off. So I just filled up the separatory funnel with the hydrosol and essential oil. Here you can see that more yellow liquid at the bottom. That is the essential oil. And it's actually uh, pretty interesting. Catnip oil is heavier than water, so it sinks to the bottom. It's one of two oils I've distilled that's done that. And so when separating it out, you want to make sure that you don't get any hydrosol with the oil. Uh, we read about that earlier how hydrolysis can affect some of the constituents of the essential oil and so I'm gonna let this sit here for a little bit and completely separate out then separate the oil from the hydrosol and it'll be ready to use some oils do smell a little bit funky at first, nitrogenous like, uh, fishy or sulfur like. And this is because of some of the constituents that are distilled out. And a lot of essential oils actually need to cure for a period of time before they are effective. And I think in the end I probably got about 2 milliliters of oil. Roughly 20 drops, or excuse me, 40 drops. So that's distilling essential oils at home. Easy process, that's why I really love it. Good medicine, easy to make, simple chemistry. It can't get any better than this, I tell you what. Thanks for joining me.